had to go get coffee to get confidence for this video. My apologies for the everything just being so out of focus. <laughs> I had the camera mounted upside down. Just FYI. Sorry. Back to the video. Canon vs Sony. The age old question. Short answer. I don't know. <laughs> In all seriousness, there actually is an actual answer for me. It's just a lot to unpack. Let's first talk about the camera that I actually have. The Sony a7 IV. Around this time last year, I was actually thinking about getting the Sony a7S III because that was like the video camera to get. But I've actually had experience using a multitude of brands. The first camera I actually bought myself was the Sony a6000. Every camera I've ever bought for myself, I still have. After the a6000, I did upgrade the, the Panasonic Lumix G7. I got it because it was a budget-friendly 4K camera that had the flippy screen so I can see myself when vlogging. But this is the camera that I started off with shooting weddings and vlogging with. From the Lumix, then I upgraded to the Canon 80D. Now this, of course, is the vlog camera. This is the Casey Neistat vlog camera. Got the same lens that he had used a lot of the time the 10 to 22. I did invest in the 18 to 35 because, well, it's 1.8 aperture and it's great in low light, really clean. I don't have a Fuji, but I have used a Fuji. I've used the Fuji X-T3, I think. And in my opinion, that's very comparable to the Sony A7 series, like A7 III, A7 IV, the kind of like hybrid kind of cameras. I really, really like the color and look that Fuji gives. Speaking of Fuji, Joshua Martin from Moment, yes, another Joshua. He came by the Creative Club studio about a month ago. He brought the Fuji X-H2S, I believe, and he had it like rigged out in a cinema rig with rails and everything. I honestly really, I really like that camera. But now I have like a rundown of the cameras that I've used and the cameras that I've all bought in my history of my career of being a filmmaker. Why did I go from all of these brands and camera bodies and go back to Sony? I went with Sony because back in 2019, I started in position and honestly my breakthrough into doing filmmaking and photography as a profession uh, was at a nonprofit and I was doing both very consistently. So I needed a camera that was at least 4K, a camera that had enough pixels that I can do really high end photography. And that's the thing that I liked about the a7 III that it was more of a hybrid camera, which is why I didn't go with the a7S III, but went with the a7 IV, because the a7 IV is more of a hybrid camera. When it comes to the video specs, it kind of gets a little close to the a7 III, but it has enough megapixels to have a little more wiggle room with punching in into your photo. So as a work camera, it was kind of the best deal for me. And I'm constantly using it every single day. That This is the camera that I have on me 24-7. But I did get a question recently on Instagram in my DMs from Johnny underscore create. He asked me, why do I still use Sony when everybody I work with uses Canon? That is a very fair question. And that is one that Gene Yoon and Steven Schultz has not gotten off my back about <laughs> since starting working there four months ago. And I've actually sat down to think about this. Why don't I get a Canon camera and make it easier for everyone else to work with me? Well, but I vlog a lot. The Ibis still has this wobble problem in the R5 and the R6. I thought there was a whole fix for it like earlier this year, but apparently still kind of a little bit of a wobble. Overheating issues sucks in R5 and R6. A lot of people have more issues with that than I've ever heard with a Sony a7 IV. I honestly never see the overheating warning sign in any usage. Even when I was in Florida, St. Augustine in September, it was hot. But honestly, when it really comes down to it, Canon and Sony, Lumix and Fuji, you kind of want to figure out first what you're going to be filming and then figure out the specs that works best for that. But then I do recommend getting your hands on a camera that you have in mind instead of just straight out buying. A rental service that I use all the time is the online rental services, Lens Rentals. They're super awesome. This is not sponsored by the way, but I do have a referral link in the description. They are like super awesome. In my experience, the customer service has been great. I always get what I need on time and timely. And they have like a plethora of gear. They even like have drones that you can rent, which is, Super cool. I say all that because when you actually get the gear and camera in your hand, you actually get to see what it's like to actually use it. But we live in an age where cameras kind of all do the same thing. The real question is, how is the experience gonna be for you? 
And in my experience, I love using the Sony a7 IV. Yeah, I do kind of like the little bit of a bigger hand grip on the R5, but I don't like the bulkiness of the R5. The lenses are like, they're pretty huge, but I think that's full frames. Full frame cameras usually have huge lenses. What the Sony puts out, and the form factor and the lightness of it. I honestly don't see myself switching anytime soon. If I was, I honestly would go with the Fuji HS2. I'm very intrigued by that camera. And I know Joshua Martin would be very happy of me saying that. <laughs> I haven't really done one of these before, or at least in a while, the sit down kind of talking video vlogs. I just thought this was a really interesting question uh, that Johnny asked me of like, what it's like working with a team that all uses Canon and me being a Sony shooter. But the bottom line is I don't have any like loyalty to any brand. I kind of like all of them for certain specific things. I just don't see a need for me to go into Canon anytime soon. I don't know, I had fun talking about this, but um, I guess one thing to leave you with, I guess gear really doesn't matter. <laughs>